Welcome everyone. Uh, today's workshop is titled The Plan, Launching and Pitching Your Venture uh, with Peter Boyd. My name is Urvi and I'm the Environmental Innovation Fellow at Sci City and the Center for Business in the Environment, which is CBA for short. Today's session is really special because um, it's the first workshop in the Innovators Toolkit series at Sci City. Uh, the Innovators Toolkit is a series of free workshops focused on building key skills for innovation. Um, so welcome and we're very excited to have you all here. Uh, we always like to start with a land acknowledgement. Um, we acknowledge that indigenous peoples and nations, including Mohegan, Mashantucket Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Staticoc, Golden Hill Pogaset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac and other Algonquin-speaking peoples have stewarded through generations the lands and waterways of what is now the state of Connecticut. We honor and respect the enduring relationship that exists between these peoples and nations and this land. We also really appreciate feedback. Uh, so please reach out to us if there's anything that you'd like to tell us about our programs and events. Um, you can use any of the contact methods on um, this slide. And we really hope that you get in touch with us to let us know how we can serve um, you better. So, all right, um, today's speaker is Peter Boyd. Um, Peter is a lecturer at the School of the Environment and resident fellow at the Yale Center for Business in the Environment. Um, outside Yale, he is the founder and CEO of Time for Good. Um, and he has years and years of experience on leadership and helping organizations with strategy, time max maximization. And he has mentored so many entrepreneurs at Yale and beyond um, with over the years. So we're very excited to have him here and I'm going to hand it off to Peter uh, to take it away with the plan. Great, um, excellent. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, can you see both me and my screen okay? Some sort of thumbs up there, excellent. Yep, some yellow Zoom thumbs. I do like interaction as we go through as well. So it doesn't matter, obviously, if you have your camera on or off for um, a sort of an update workshop such as this, but it, um, it would be good. Um, any, any kind of interaction, always welcome. So welcome uh, to the Size City Workshop, uh, the plan. Uh, so launching and pitching your venture. And I say like, even if you are conceiving of your venture right now as well, I'd say I'd go earlier stage than launching and pitching as well. Um, so hopefully we're, we're useful to you. Um, welcome to the session. Um, the the um, key, couple of key bits from my side, uh, sort of personally, uh, as, as we sort of engage in this hour together, one is diversity and identities. That diversity is proven to be important um, outside outside Yale, outside these walls, uh, and also like in entrepreneurship, especially like like so. Bring your all your dimensions of diversity into this room for the next hour, uh, but certainly into your venture that you're you are thinking of. Um, they they are important to you, so they're important to us, and they're likely important to your venture. Um, Inclusion and subtleties, um, If you, uh, we want you to feel welcome and included. So if you need anything said or done to make you feel so, um, please find a way of letting me know. In addition to sort of um, messaging me on the chat, you can either message Matt or Irvi as well, um, but we want you to feel included. That includes um, speed and language. I tend to talk quickly in a Scottish accent when I get excited. So do feel free to slow me down um, or ask me to repeat things. Um, that, 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 that is part of inclusion. Um, and then my last little brown rules for today, um, very easy, sort of kind, kindness, curiosity, and presence. Be kind to each other um, and our technology. I hope it all works today um, and me uh, to the extent it doesn't. Uh, be curious. Um, there's, there's hopefully some stuff in here to keep you curious and no competing screens, please. Please try and be fully present. Um, it does take your processing strength down at least 10% if you've got other screens in view. And pen and paper at the early stages of sort of getting hold of things is always better than keystrokes. So in an hour, just wanted to introduce ourselves, um, strengthen our network of kindred spirits, take a look around you. And like you see, often you learn as much from each other as you do from me. Um, obviously in a sort of more rapid fire workshop is slightly less interactive than we would like in person, um, but still nonetheless a network hopefully. And then second, cover a flexible framework that um, I've developed over the years with the, the, the various ventures and, and partners of Sci City and other, other places that, um, and so it's a 10 page plan that can hopefully grow with with your story as you develop your narrative and your venture. So that's that's sort of why we're here, purpose of today. Um, how are we going to use the time? Just that people and the context get, get ourselves introduced. Um, a plan and a purpose cover why, why bother? 
Um, and then the plan, the template itself, it's, 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 it's a, there's a 10 slide template and a one slide template for you to have a look at. And then I'm gonna close with thoughts on how to use that and how to disseminate it. Okay, um, again, tracking with the, with the, the odd yellow zoom thumb, just to, just to know that this is why you thought you came here. Um, it's always helpful. In terms of who I am, thanks very much for Irby for the introductions. I can make this super quick now. Um, I've had an experience sort of a, a wide and varied across different sectors, uh, from private sector, uh, McKinsey, 10 jobs in 12 years across the Virgin Group, working with Richard Branson in various entrepreneurial settings um, in London, New York, South Africa, uh, nonprofit, um, helping set up a, a nonprofit geared towards economic solutions to climate change, UK government. I've got three or four different sort of places that I tuck into Yale. Um, and I jokingly put in a sort of a, a fifth sector of an ultra marathon across the desert I did, but I learned as much about sort of the entrepreneurial spirit, getting things done um, and leadership in that uh, run as I probably did from any of the other sectors. So that's why I included there. Um, and I, I do as much probably outside Yale as I do in, just sort of consulting with nonprofit and for-profits on what, what you, you're going to touch on today, purpose-driven connected leadership. And when that intersects with a journey to a net zero world, that's even better for me. Um, in terms of what makes me me, I'm curious too, um, as, as hopefully you are. I'm resilient. I don't quit on things I know are worth it. I'm positive. You'll hopefully get that today. But there's a via character test, which I recommend everyone takes just to in increase your, 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 no your self-knowledge um, and hope and gratitude and zest are up there for me. And then also family is important to me. Um, I'm a son, a husband, um, and a dad of three under nine, which are uh, gratefully on the same bus right now going to uh, on elementary school. But if there is some noise in the next hour, you know what time it is. It's uh, just after four, after four Eastern in the middle of a pandemic. Um, excellent. So over to you. That's me. Uh, a quick poll so that we get to, to know each other quickly. Um, in old school, it'd be hands. Um, in new school, I'm wondering if you could actually get out your screens. I, I have, having said um, no screens because it helps you concentrate. Just for this next few minutes, I'd love you to get your cell phones. Um, you can, if you've got a, another browser, sort of open up another browser and put pollev.com slash void. But it, normally the quickest one is to put 22333 into the addressee line and then void in the message line. And then the first person that gets a text back from the screen and says, hey, you're talking to the screen with Peter, uh, please give me a thumbs up and then I'll know that the things are things are active. Either a yellow zoom thumb or something like that. Yep, uh, Mattis, thanks for, uh, uh, Mattis, thanks, thanks very much for uh, being a lead there. So um, here's, <clears throat> here's a check-in just to get a flavor for who's in the room. Um, if you can either check in with three separate texts or one with three spaces, just your first name, home country maybe, and one word on how you're feeling today. And I'm hoping as you as you get talking to the screen, there we go. Looks like uh, Poll Everywhere is working for us today or so far, or at least for Nishant. If you like a word there, like curious or excited, um, um, you'll notice that it, it gets bigger. Uh, just like USA, there's more of you from the USA than anywhere else, so that word's getting bigger. So yeah, if you if you like a word, put it in. And the other the other bit that I quite like here is like uh, it does accept emojis. So if that gets across how you're feeling better than a word, then feel free to put an emoji too. And what I'll do with this, uh, in addition to any slides you see today, is I'll put it into a web link and give it to Matt and Irvi. Um, so that you've got it as a sort of, um, if you want to go over any of the material that we go through today and sort of go at, at your own pace. And that'll include a screen grab of things like this, just to see what a nice varied group we've got today. Good to see somebody who's caffeinated like me. Excellent. India is giving U the USA a run for its money. There's people still coming in. Uh, uh, with the with the with the bell of Zoom Zoom entrance. Uh, for those that have just joined, um, the instructions are at the top of the screen. Just to, to, to check in, we've got a couple more questions just to sort of see who's uh, sort of where you are and how this can be helpful to you. Thanks for getting the sloth in, somebody. It's a popular one, the sloth. Oh, okay, see, see see that a lot. Um, excellent. 
Good variety, thank you. And I think that's just about everyone in the room with at least one uh, uh, one um, entrance. So thank you for that. Next one up. Um, so good to see who you are. Uh, just in terms of where you think you are in this idea of making a plan for venture, um, where would you identify yourself as here? Right, a self-selecting bunch today. So nobody that wants to join somebody else, you're either thinking about starting something up or you are starting something up. So far with a lean to, towards thinking about it, it's, it's, it's in the future for me. So slightly earlier stage. Okay, great. And then what would make this session together most useful and interesting to you? Helping craft my story, as it seems to be more the, the the top piece here. Helping find some fellow travelers feels like it's 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 more a, but just wanted to to check it out. Yep, finding an opportunity. Just interested in learning, dipping in. Okay, actually, if it's 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 a good balance. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, for, for, for those of you that are in, uh, sort of uh, in the Yale community here, you know, sort of, you, are you looking for sort of amusement learning while at Yale? And then that includes if you're a startup, uh, if you're a founder, um, or potentially pursuing it beyond Yale, like this is sort of using this as your time and opportunity, or you, you're actually from the wider Yale community that I know Size City reaches, reaches out to regularly. Okay. So no dabblers. We're either, we're either pursuing it for, for, for a life beyond Yale, um, or you're from the Yale community and you've come in on this, but no, nobody just to, uh, for here for amusement. Very directed, thank you. Okay, um, just roughly on the sector, if, if, if you know. Over time, I'm, I'm seeing increasingly more of the of, of a sort of doesn't always fit neatly, but uh, dominant on the for-profit side today. Great. Um, and then just what stage are you at uh, with your idea? I saw some aspiring founders being the winning answer, but just where do you think you are on this sort of just thought of it, written something down, told people other than my close friends or further? Great, good variety. Okay, and then just to the ex uh, uh, extent, oh, uh, yeah, somebody has some uh, answers carrying over. I just wanted to sort of see uh, how, how the pandemic has affected your thinking on your on your idea. Like most positive at the top, A's down to the sort of it's knocked it back. I'm not sure now. It's really kind of like like how how has the pandemic sh shifted shifted your thinking? Okay, for many it's 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 it was overwhelmingly positive, which is great to be in a community that's embracing such a huge change in the, on the globe in a positive way. Tends to be the entrepreneurs. Excellent, looking forward to it. And then last last couple last question really. Um, so founders of which is just everybody in the room really and similar. Like like what word best describes the area of your idea? Sector, product, service, a keyword. And again, open, it's a sort of open mic uh, and so far as you can put more than one entry in, just give us a flavor for who's in the room and what you're looking at. Sustainability being a big one, excellent. Um, that's obviously one after my own heart. Not, uh, some great ventures elsewhere too. Healthcare also big and popular, luxury. Hopefully the luxury is also sustainable. Um, yep. Energy, technology, finance, good variety. Excellent. I think we're gonna getting close to uh, a contribution from everyone in the room again. Thank you all for uh, being game with your with your screens. Um, so now's the time. 
uh, to heed my first example, so like screens away would be awesome um, and sit back and relax. And um, I will um, uh, cover cover why the plan plan is important. So so first, yeah, first one I wanted to cover this and it's sort of like before we set out on a on a sort of a ten page plan. So it's really just thinking about why is the plan important. And so if you could drop into the chat function in Zoom or put your hand up, uh, you know, the Zoom hand in reactions, um, if you want to speak, that'd be also great. Uh, like any, any way to think about it. Um, wh why do we want a plan? I mean, what do we want a plan to do and why is a plan useful? I'm just gonna come off slideshow here so I can write in anything that really pops out for you guys. Excellent. Somebody's got me started on chat. Thank you very much. Um, here we go. And maybe Matt, Matt and, and, and uh, Irby can also help me making sure that we've got it. Assess feasibility. Focus. Prevent dilution of efforts. Awesome. Clear timeline. Accountability, somebody seconding that as well, clear accountability. Timeline, direction I see as well. And if, any, other, any other thoughts that are sort of different or you wanna double down on what's already up there? John said, um, guide and ground you when things get complicated. Nice, a great phrase as well, thank you. And thanks for picking that up. Organizing your approach. Great. I will. This this is already a good list. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, it is it, sort of we try our best in Zoom in Zoom land in pandemic to make sure that we are uh, getting getting your uh, opinions and it's interactive, not just a one way street here. Thank you. Just spell check that before I get back in. Great. Um, and a good list. I mean, again, I think you you got everything I was thinking of really. Like like the key piece here, like. You know, it's a clear pathway. It's a roadmap to your vision. Uh, it focuses the energy. Uh, you covered that. Realistic and time-constrained goals to get the vision done. Measurable progress. Define priorities. And then be able to communicate those priorities to others to attract resources. Um, and talking about attracting resources, attract investors, and attract talent. Um, so a number of ways why this, the plan, especially as, as, it's, as it's the bulk of, uh, of the bar chart there was an aspiring founders to, to, to founders is like getting your thoughts down from head and a great verbal pitch into plan, um, all, always great for these reasons and more. And, and I just wanted to, to, to sort of uh, sort of say, but, but, but please have a plan. Um, there's, there's a lot on uh, to be said for sort of agile development and just sort of getting out there and making something, making it happen. Um, and, and, and it's not to dispute that. In fact, I also love this idea of, of you might've heard about it, the an MVP, a minimum viable product. And then the slight twist on that is a slick, a, a, a simple, lovable, but complete uh, product. Um, and this diagram here, I think really is, is one of my favorites. Uh, I think I put the, the, and I put the source there, just the idea of like, if you've got a vision for building and selling a car, um, don't, don't go on the top row. Don't, don't, don't sort of put the, the wheels in and then the axles and then, you know, sort of finally you've got a car at the end. It's just like a skateboard is simple, lovable, complete. A, bi a bicycle is, is, is also the same. A moped and then you get your car. So is, can your idea take that form where you're sort of testing and getting to sort of where, where you're going and validating yourself on the way? But it, no matter how much you embrace MVPs, agile development, slick, um, I, I do say that, that, but do have a plan as you're going and try and make it a living document. That's something that I wanna make sure comes through over the course of the, the, the time we've got together. So let's move on to the next piece, um, purpose-driven leadership and per personal purpose. Um, and, and, and where this plan comes from, and indeed more fundamentally, where your venture comes from, where your idea comes from. Um, many of the things that I teach around Yale um, and actually sort of consult outside Yale are, are, are based on this very simple framework of purpose-driven leadership. And I want to sort of cover just the top line of that now. Um, and, and it comes from that zigzag, uh, that, that, that zigzag life uh, that, I, that, that I said I've led so far across these different sectors that passionate about what makes good leaders. And when I'm a leader at my best, like, like, like what's the logic flow? And it's a fairly simple logic flow, being very clear on knowing why you're here 
and why those around you are here. Then knowing what's important and be very clear of the destination of, of what's important and then drive your actions from the first two. And when, whenever you can, get that onto a page. Now, it seems like quite a, a, a sort of simple logic concept, it's just hard to do. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why the, sort of the plan is there and some of the other tools that, that I teach in some of the other Yale courses is like, how do we translate a sort of fairly simple but hard to live logic flow into action? And so the, the framework that I'll, I'll cover is purpose-driven connected leadership. And then just the idea of connecting your purpose to priorities, to potential, to performance, and that your leadership strength and indeed the strength of your of your venture potentially is as strong as the weakest of these fibers. And, and, and the idea of being centered and mindful on, on all of these um, rather than think like there's, it's a sort of, it's a siloed approach and I only have to do that thing once, I don't have to revisit. It's just like try and think of this as connected and something that um, sort of lives um, um, in this way. So with that in mind, I wanted to put up, um, oh, sorry, and then just, just to sort of some thoughts on verbs on what you might want to do with those Ps um, as you sort of um, stay mindful and, and get that rope as strong as you can. So I wanted to um, ground us, uh, you a little bit uh, here, and just to, to, to the extent you want to kind of work along with me now, you'll have this afterwards, but just the thought of, of if you want to take a slice, a, a sheet of paper um, and just slice it into three vertically um, or a notepad um, and, and, and write down your personal purpose. And as a founder, it's all important when you're doing your venture and indeed then writing your plan. So on the first side of, the side of this, this first third on your fork in the road, just about, any, just about every single one of us is at a fork in the road. So 1A is why did you decide to be at this fork in the road? Why did you choose to be here? It might be, why did you come to Yale, start the venture, <clears throat> or more generally? But so what, almost like own your choices to this fork in the road. 1B is like, what, do you, what have you brought with you to this fork in the road? Why do you think you're a good person to start this thing? What at attributes have you brought to the fork in the road? Um, why, why are you good to have around for this idea? The second piece uh, in, in the middle there is your horizons. Artificially long, artificially short. Artificially long, it's like, why are you excited about where you could be with this venture in five to 10 years time? What does it look like to be out there? Not where has it got to in terms of revenue or sectors or number of countries you're in, more why are you excited about the five to 10 year you in this venture? And then artificially short horizon, if you knew you only had a few months left to create this venture and hand it on to somebody else, what would you ensure gets done and why? And then the third one on the right hand side is almost like the bit you can't help but be you, your inner engine. So have a think maybe about when are you in flow? What activities cause you to forget to eat and drink? And if you can, describe why. There might be an a work example, that's important, and a play back in childhood. And then, um, and then another one that, that's sort of you're almost ready for the big question 3B by then is like, why are you here? on the planet, like, like uh, there's a wonderful quote from Mary Oliver in a poem, like, what are you gonna do with your one wild and precious life? What's the big why? So to the extent um, you, you've got your notepad and you've, 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 you've sectioned it in into three here, I mean, feel free now just to have a, a, I'll just give you a couple of minutes to jot down what's your answers to these questions. Just first and best thoughts, no essays, no complete sentences. You'll have this template later after the, um, after the workshop. You started to jot down some notes, a couple of things to maybe think about uh, as you're doing it. One is maybe circle the question, 1A, 2A, 3A, et cetera. Circle the question that's gotten you something interesting, thinking, thinking something interesting about your venture or about where you are in your fork in the road and what you're gonna do next. And then the other thing, if you wanted to crunch it into like an impact statement, um, which is hard to do but, uh, until you've thought about the component parts, but that's the piece at the bottom of the page there. I believe in this. I want to bring X into the world and create Y. Um, that's, that's, that, that takes a while normally, but feel free to sort of jot, jot some notes down there as well. So you circled the question. I'm just wondering if, you, if, you, uh, if anyone wants to share, you know, sort of what got them thinking in a, in a new way about their venture. Any, any, any answer there? Anyone to put into the Zoom chat? That's that's that you know that question is interesting for my business or 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 my or my venture. 
Excellent. Thanks, Jenna, for getting started. Yeah, it's, it's, you still put when you in flow. Excellent. I'm, I'll explain why I ask you these questions in a second. So I just wanted to see which questions do people gravitate to. Thanks. Thanks, Emily, for, for saying exactly the same one. So, so 3A for, two, for, for, for a couple of you. Yep, in, in our engine questions too. Excellent. And, and, and it's actually vital for an entrepreneur and a startup founder to, to, to uh, know these, these pieces. Um, there we go, a multiple answer there, 3A, 2A, 2B. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Um, so you'll have more time to reflect on this and any time invested in why am I doing this is, is vital in most places in life and including some of my you know, sort of Yale courses, we, we, we think about it about where people are in their Yale journey, but especially important um, as you're embarking on something as important as a venture that you wanna outlive past your time at Yale. Um, so if you are interested in this, compare some notes with people here um, to the extent you know, sort of you get into the building soon on Sci City, you can, in person workshops, you're connected by Matt and Irvi to others of like minded and sort of similar ventures, please feel free to do so and compare notes here. Refine and revisit as you as you need. If you Google Ikigai, there's another interesting framework on like looking for that intersect between what you love doing, what you can be paid for, what the world needs and what you're good at. So another a place, place to explore. And I just wanted to cover before uh, sort of we moved on to have, sort of how does this fit into to the template um, with um, basically why are these questions important? So from an individual perspective, I, I find 1A sort of a, a good anchor. It's just like, this is why I came here. This is why I'm investing in Yale. This is why I'm doing my startup. Um, and as a team, if you're doing this with a founding team, it's like, look for similarity and complementarity in this answer. I often do that when we're, I'm working with teams. On 1B, it's like, that's the boost in the pitch. I'm good at this stuff. You're like, like, I should remember that I'm good at this stuff. This is what I want to bring into the world and I'm, I'm, I'm good at it. Um, I, I, as a team, I'm looking for synergy there, but I'm also looking for differences. It's just like, and as you look for co-founders and people to join you on your venture, it's just like, you don't all want to have the same thing in your knapsack that you're bringing to the party. You want to have a, you sort of a variety of skills and inputs and lived experience. Um, <clears throat> on 2A, a couple, uh, sort of what, what one or two people said that that was an important one. It's like, as an individual, can you keep your eye on the prize? Is your current practice building towards this, this, this future? And also, the, I think for, for the extent of this, this workshop, is this, like, there's some useful words in what you might have scribbled here for your vision and mission, which is a key slide in the template. And then to be, I think that this, this sort of artificially short horizon, I think is normally really useful for your priorities. Like what's the most important things I've got to get started. Um, it, sort of, uh, it sort of cracks that urgent and important matrix and says like what's truly important irrespective of my perceived urgency. On 3A, um, as a lot of people sort of gravitated to 3A, what's my inner engine? Uh, job crafting is a term that is, is worth sort of reading up on, but to the extent it, you know, it, it, it pertains to startups, it's just like, can you, can your startup be something that includes the answer to what you put here? Because you're more likely to be in flow and be infectiously good at what you do if, if your startup involves that answer. In 3A2 at play, is it's like hopefully you've got that time in the month, if not in the Monday to Friday, nine till five, to recharge and be a better you at your startup. And then 3C, uh, so, sorry, th uh, sort of 3A childhood, it's sometimes a useful frame. I think especially for entrepreneurs that are starting something bold, almost by definition it's bold because you're starting something new. Is that like, It's that useful frame of like, if you love biking or you love jumping off a cliff into the ocean or whatever you said that you did as a kid, it's like, that's a startup. Like, 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 like think of that analogy of jumping off a cliff or building something or Lego or whatever you said there, that's a powerful frame for you to sort of anchor yourself with some courage for your startup. And then, and, and then three, uh, and 3A in general as a team, if you're talking about it as a founding team, I love to when teams talk about their differences in what makes them tick, because you can be sensitive to that person needs to work alone, that one needs to work as a brainstorm, et cetera. And then 3B, just the idea here is like, hopefully your mission on your startup and your calling sort of align over time. And the answer here has an element of that. Um, and it's also just good as a team to appreciate the richness of the people that you've gathered around you. So that's the thought on sort of like, just like, especially as founders is like, bring your personal purpose to this plan, the more fundamentally to the plan, bring this personal purpose to the venture. Um, and because what it does is it's like both a personal purpose and a plan anchors you 
in effectively the, the, the box of operation. Um, so why, you know, why question or why and make a plan? It's like, it's your North Star. It's the thing that you're trying to head towards. It's like, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do and create what I'm trying to create. I'm here right now and I need to get there. And then, and then by doing that, you sort of, as I say, the box of operation then has some dimensions around it. You choose what to do, your tasks. You choose your talent and the treasure, i.e. what people, what budget am I going to put towards this, what effort, and then time passes to get there. So you've, by, by being very clear on your why and your team's why, you, you sort of set those dimensions of the box and you're, you've, got, you've got an aim. And as, as humans, we like to aim at something. Um, just to say, like, like, to anchor you in an example for this and why I'm excited to be on workshops like these, is to say, so my personal vision is that everyone can see their path to their great work. Um, and, and the mission that I help leaders build purpose-driven paths to that great work by lifting their sights and spirits and skills. Um, and so uh, that's how we sort of like, like it's something that's become part of life, but it's also becoming part of, of sort of business and, 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 uh, and, and, and working here at Yale. So let's move on to the 10 slide plan and the goal um, with, a, with a couple of pieces of important context. The first piece <laughs> is that it's, a, it's intended to be scaffolding rather than the building itself. You're the building. So I, I bring sort of a, a, a sort of set of very simple tools, a framework that you, it's a, almost to allow you to build with both hands, but it's your, it's your building and I, and I don't want to touch it. The, the, the other piece that I wanted to, to say is that this, this plan that you're going to do is, it, is continually evolving. Uh, you might have heard the pieces like, like planning is essential, but all plans are useless. Um, the, 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 the idea that um, no one ventures in the same river twice. It's not the same river. It's not the same person. You can continually plan. And so the, the beauty of the, the, the planning process, um, especially in startup mode, is it's, it's, it's a living document. So if you create something that you then put away and file and forget about, it's just like that, 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 that that's not the spirit in terms of that, that will actually sort of make this useful for you. So with that in mind, let's do 10 slides to a plan, but also uh, you know, sort of anchor the, the sort of the piece I said at the start about like, you know, can you crunch it into a page? And so my favorite version, and we're gonna come to the sort of the suggested 10 in a second, but my favorite version of the one page is, is really useful here. You wouldn't ever necessarily present this to an external party, but to sort of guide you and to guide your co-founders and to guide your senior executives, it's, it's, it's a powerful tool up to a large size, size business. Um, but the idea would be to have your vision and mission, the, the, effectively the venture is why at the top, the key priorities, what are the big things that have to, have to be done, the strategies, um, like, like how are we going to get there and the there, the, the definition of what success feels like and, and looks like the results. And it's all underpinned by your values, your norms, like, like, like how are you going to behave with each other? How are you going to behave with your customers? If you, if you have them. I, I do think that another, we're talking about one pages, I do think that the business canvas is another complementary framework. It's not something that I necessarily teach or lean on, but to the extent you find the, the kind of the headings here useful to organize your thoughts, that's another good input at this stage. So on with the 10 slides. Um, and, he, and, 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 and the 10 slides, um, I'm going to suggest them in a certain order. Um, and it starts at number one in the middle. We go up to the 12 o'clock, two, three, four, and go round to the 10. But you, you can sort of can and should weave these in the different order that makes your story come to life and in your preferences, either for you as a, as a founder or maybe for the funder, um, if, you, if, you're go, if, you're go, if you're going for funding. Um, so while I, I'm going to present it in this order, you might well end up with a, a sort of a, an order that looks completely different to mine. So first piece then um, on this on this on this ten pager is um, is going to be the sort of the purpose. But just before that, the cover itself, just it's starting to create the idea of different versions. So along with your organization name, have a, have an idea that one of these versions is the, the the primary audience is you, as in make this version internal, the the, the kind of the dirty laundry, the, the 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 poorly formed thoughts, as Sci City says, the raggedy the raggedy thoughts, put them in here um, because you have a version that you are working on and then you can always save as and spin out a more polished version that takes away that doubt when you're presenting it to, to an external audience. So start the idea with a sort of an internal, an internal plan. Um, and then, the, 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 then building on what we said um, earlier about the importance 
of, of a why, both a personal why and an organizational why. I think the most one of the most important slides in, in your deck is the goal. Is and, and you call it the goal, the purpose. I, I'm not, not sure precious about any of the titles here. Um, I, but, but I think that the key thing that's nice to have on a goal is both a vision and a mission. Um, and just to be clear on the difference and why they complement each other. The vision is the world state when you and others like you are successful. It could almost feel cliched. It's so big, it's so bold, um, and it's so simple potentially, but you also making it feel possible, inevitable even. And that's the vision. That's the, the kind of the sunny place that you're heading towards and why you get up every morning with this startup. The mission is the path, is this sort of your underlying purpose, your chosen path to help make that vision happen. And if you get it right and it's tight, then it's very clear what you're going to do to you and to others. But it's almost also tight and clear what you're not going to do because the vision and mission is, is, is so clear. Um, and if you get that right, then, um, then it's, it's unifying and all the qualities that you guys were talking about as sort of why I have a plan, um, it inspires, it challenges, it unites, it attracts, it gets talent, it gets investors. It's just like the vision and mission can do much of that on its own. Um, and I, I put some notes in here just while you're doing this yourself and afterwards um, in terms of, uh, to the extent you find this template useful and you follow it. Um, the idea is just like to get rid of the wasted words, the loose and, and, and useless words until you're left with the essence of a tight thought and a tight collection of words. Um, uh, I, and I suggest a, a sort of a bookend of words here, like three to 15 words maybe. Um, three words comes from Guy Kawasaki's presentation on the mantra. Um, like, like you, don't, you don't need a big long purpose statement, you need a mantra that people can get behind. And Chris Anderson, who founded TED, um, creates, the, creates this requirement, you cannot get a TED talk, not even past the first gate, if you don't have a through line that is in 15 words or less. So, you know, sort of like, why, why would you sort of create your venture in 15 words or less on both, say, the, say the vision and, and the mission? And then not just an excuse to get my hometown of Edinburgh in here, but just the idea here is this like sometimes a kind of compelling visual um, that sort of links in with your vision and mission is really good here, either behind as a backdrop or on the side. Like if you're out sort of, if your vision is to help in healthcare, it's like, well, what kind of healthcare, what kind of patient do you help? Um, what, what, is, what is your thing doing? Sustainability and energy were also popular uh, ones in the word cloud a few minutes ago. So like, like, what kind of thing are you doing there? Is it a wind turbine? Is it um, a, a community that now ha is, is sort of lit up and is, is more just because of, of, of your intervention? Um, so, so sometimes a, a, a visual in there is really important too. So if you can combine those three elements, a really clear vision, a really clear mission, and a compelling uh, visual, then it's, 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 it's a huge anchor for you. It, it, it helps you sort of make decisions, but it also really brings people up to speed quickly. Um, and I, that's why you know, sort of I suggest is it's one of the opening or, or most important slides in your plan. So next, next piece, next few sections is, is really on the sort of the what you do and why it matters and how is it new. So section two, the, the idea here is, is this like, like, you know, pause and say like, what's the challenge? What's the world without you? And, and what's the problem you're trying to solve? So it's, sometimes it's very powerful to do this in the micro. It's like, here's my target customer. This is their terrible life without my stuff uh, or my service. Um, and I'm gonna describe to you what is happening in the micro uh, with one of my, my with sort of target customers or communities. And then in the macro, is this, it might be like, what's the consequence of lots of customers in this situation? Um, and, and, and show how bad that is. Again, it could be two slides, but it's sometimes quite powerful to get the challenge across in, in, just, in, in just a slide. What's the problem you're trying to solve? And then get, th this is a nice piece to think. So go into like very simply, very clearly, what's your solution? How does it work? Um, you might say for a key target customer, you might have a couple of different flows, but the, the idea here in, in the suggestion is to create a simple process, three, four steps. That's all most human brains can get their heads around. It's just like, how is your thing, how does your thing actually work? And there might be a picture or an icon, step one, some detail, step two, step three. Um, 
I think Airbnb has a like 42 page guide on a very complicated legal arrangements of what happens when basically, you know, strangers stay in other, uh, other strangers homes. Um, but, but the how to for the, for the host and the how to for the guests is one, two, three. So can you do that with your venture? Like what's the, what's the simplicity, no matter how complex your idea or service might be. And then the piece about like, like how is it new is like, even if you're nonprofit, but especially, but most people are on the call seem to be uh, on the for-profit space. It's like, what's the competition? What's the context? Every, every venture has, has that. You're like, like everyone has a, has a market context. And, and the idea is, as, as the question prompt is in there, what gives you the space and freedom to operate? What's the, what's the white space that you're in? Um, I've got two format suggestions, and you might gravitate to one, or you think your target audience may gravitate to one. But the idea is, like, if you've got something, two differentiators that are really amazing, it's A and it's B, then can you put yourself in a graph where you are A and B? You are the green dot in this diagram. And then all your other competitors or competitor types, you don't have to name individual competitors if you don't want to, but all your competitor types are either only A, but they're not B, or only B and they're not A, or they're neither A nor B, they're really terrible. But it, so it's clearly showing you as being the best and having some white space in the place you want to occupy. But the key trick here, obviously, is you're defining the axes. You are saying A and B is vital in my marketplace, and I am both A and B, or I will be A and B. So if you can do that, if you can boil down the essence of your competitive advantage or soon to be competitive advantage into two, this is sometimes a really good pictorial way of showing that you know your market, you know your context, and you know why you're better or will be. If it's a bit more complicated than that, you say, no, no, there's five or six features and I've got all five and my competitors are, are, are terrible, then actually the grid the piece is again, a, a nice quick visual way of saying, I've got all of these and look at, look at my poor competitors. And you can probably think of numerous examples on the internet where you've been kind of, you know, uh, lured into, excuse me, lured into purchases of a, certain, of a certain product or service because the thing that is on the website has got all these features and you know, sort of uh, the competitors don't have that. So that's the piece on sort of like, what, what is it? What, the, what, what was the guts of what, what, what is it? Next piece uh, is to think about the business potential and, 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 and you know, sort of, and getting that across and being infectious about the potential. Um, one of the places, one of the slides that I suggest is like five is the idea of, of market validation. Validate the space that you're in. Um, you could, on this chart, you could describe the key trends that make now the right time to be in this marketplace. Um, what market do you even operate in? Can you define that clearly? And the opportunity in terms of both size and time. Um, one of the classic management models is this idea of Tam Sam Som, like this big number, the total possible demand for your product, a total available market or total addressable. The SAM is the, is the segmented addressable market. And then the SOM, the share of the market that you think you can go get. So, you know, sort of all people in the USA, you know, sort of um, there's this many small towns, I think I can get, you know, sort of 10% of the small towns in Connecticut. Um, and you've sort of taken it down, but you've shown that as you grow, you could grow in to the, to the SAM and the town. And it gets people thinking that's how big their business is. Um, the, second, the, the second part of this on the business potential is clearly the business model. Like, like how are you designed to be sustainable? And I would say this to nonprofits as much as I say this um, to for-profits. Everyone needs to show sustainability. Um, what's the flow of money? Who pays you for what? How does the money move? Um, I do this as a completely blank slide for you because you are so varied in your ideas. Uh, often this starts with founders or co-founders like sitting there with a whiteboard and saying like, like, where does the money move? How do we get paid for this? What happens next? Um, and and, and you know, sort of, it might start as this complete sort of conceptual sketch and then get it in to sort of a, a chart and a slide that you can then communicate um, to whoever you want to communicate with. This is how we are going to be sustainable. This is the model. And then from there is this uh, going to the market. Like, like how, do you, how are you going to reach your target customers? Um, what, what is the way to, to, to go to market? You might, if, if, if uh, you're sort of a, a, a direct to consumer uh, a venture or um, you, you know, even business to business, you know, so, so the marketing might be absolutely vital to what you do. So you might have a marketing plan that is 20 slides long. Um, that's okay. It's just, this is the one slide summary of that marketing plan. It's like, how are you gonna be famous where you need to be famous? 
could be PR focused, could be content marketing led, could be advertising, whatever it is. And I, I really quite like this um, phrase from Seth Godin here about like, like what makes your product or service remarkable as in able to be remarked upon? Um, how, how are you going to travel? How are you going to get famous? And then ne next up is, is like, who's on it? And, and, and how are you doing? Um, and again, you can put these in any order, just the, 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 that's next up in, in, my, in the way that I've, I've sort of done the flow of the sections here. So who's on it is your team. Um, the key piece here is, can you describe the talent and the relevance to the task at hand? Now, many of you here, especially that big bar chart that said aspiring founders might say, well, it's only me. I said, well, that's okay. You could still fill a really impressive team slide if it's, just, if it's only you. The first piece to think about is to think of it as an hourglass, not a classic pyramid. So think of all the people that are advising you that have got good experience and, and are fans of what you've done. You've shared your idea and they think it's a great idea. And it could be an uncle or an aunt. It doesn't have to be sort of some, a semi, a sort of a hugely formal relationship. It could be the, the friendly advisors here in Sci City, of which, you know, sort of, you know, Irvi, Matt, me, it's sort of, we count ourselves uh, potential advisors for you. So the key piece is, 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 is filling out the top piece of the funnel here, the top piece of the hourglass, shows whoever's reading your deck that you know what you're skilled in, you know what you're not skilled in, and you know what you need to be skilled in. And you have called upon these fans of yours, and they are willing to advise you on this. And they've got interesting CVs and resumes in addition to you. Um, the, the next piece is like, again, if you're on your own and you're this aspiring founder from the bar chart earlier, is that you don't need to put in people that you've hired or sort of free volunteers that have been won over. You could put in my intended hires. Hire one would be here. My next hire would be here. And that also is a powerful information signal to whoever is reading this because you're showing that you know how your venture is going to grow and where you're going to need your first people. So the idea here is that you could have a very strong team slide that could be filled with quite a few names and positions, but it's still just you and it's just you in a PowerPoint right now. Um, so don't be deterred and say, I can't do a team slide until I have a team. Um, you, you can have a team because you're thinking through the team. Um, and, and, and just trying to be able to describe those first few hire, hires and why. But uh, the key piece here, just like don't leave the competition slide out because everyone has competition. Everyone has a, has a kind of competitive context. Um, otherwise, you will not be believed. Likewise, with the team, is just like you can't do this truly alone. So who are your partners? Who's your ecosystem? How do you think you're going to bring this uh, uh, to market and who with? And then oh, just about any, anyone, uh, any, any audience is going to need sort of some, some sort of angle on the financials. Um, we're paired often in Sci City with storytelling uh, with spreadsheets. So I'm not going to touch on the expertise behind how you create the slide. More than say, have a slide in here that brings, to, that brings in to your plan the pertinent points. Um, you, there's a variety of different formats. So you could almost like, you know, sort of semi-beautify a spreadsheet like you are on the left or create a more pictorial approach of, of, of eras. Like year one is MVP, year two is full national launch, year three is international growth and giving some metrics. The key piece though, is to explain your drivers. Most people, especially if you're seeking funding, they don't tend to trust your numbers. Um, I, you know, it's sort of almost like hate to break it to you. They, they do their own numbers, but what they do look very closely at is that you understand the drivers of your business and, the under, and you understand how you're gonna build your drivers of your business. So this is a really important slide, even if finance isn't a strong suit, and even if your numbers are not going to be believed, um, you know, sort of, it's really important to have something like this. And if you are asking for funding at this stage, um, it is, this is probably the right slide to say, we are looking for X funding. This is going to enable us to do Y, and being very clear on that. And then to round it off in the last of the 10 sections, um, I'd almost say it's as equally as important as, as, as slide one, as, 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 as number one, that's sort of the goal, is the idea of communicating that you know what's important and your, and your traction and progress is also clearly communicated. So the idea here of like progress and priorities. Down the left-hand side, you've, you've really clearly identified and displayed, excuse me, the key areas that you know you need to be successful, whether it's year you know, sort of month one and you haven't made a thing yet, or, or year 
four and you're going into full national launch, it's likely that your business or venture needs to be brilliant at these three or four areas. Could be product, marketing, could be brand, could be team and partners. Whatever the thing is, you've named it very clearly and you've put it down the left-hand side. And then the middle column says, we've managed to achieve this to date. Progress till now is this. And you're showing, I've made some really good progress on these. Even if you know, so in early days, it's, it's, it's a very light sentence. It's like, I have talked to 20 experts about X or I've talked to, you know, sort of three people about Y. That's still good. And you've attended two workshops. Put whatever it is in there in terms of your traction against what's critical and important. And then priorities is like what you're doing next to focus on that is, is, is the sort of, you know, what you know you need to do next. There's an incredible amount of information on here that you will need to think about, but more importantly for the plan, it's an incredible amount of information to your audience because they go, this person really knows their venture. They know what's important to drive it, they're getting some traction and they know what they're doing next. It's an incredibly powerful slide, especially when you pair it with the powerful goal, the super clear vision and mission in section one. So that's it, that's 10 slides. Um, you might wanna finish it with a nice logo, compelling visual, a restatement of why, you know, sort of why team up with me, why buy me, et cetera. But that's the 10 slides. Um, and I wanted to go back to the scaffolding um, and, the, uh, um, um, and indeed the squiggles um, and say that, 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 you know, sort of really the richness in this is gonna come in, in putting in what's in your head and sort of dropping it into all the right places and then making this your own. Um, and not being too confined to my numbers one to 10 or my titles. It's just the idea of like, take these, they, they are built on a number of different VCs, TED Talks, uh, mentoring, uh, mentees, local venture partners, et cetera. And, and it, they seem to sort of all coalesce around ideas similar to these 10. So if you can, if you can cover those, um, then you're hopefully on a good track. And it's, it's maybe sort of some frameworks to put ideas that are already in your head and put them into uh, the right place. I wanted to um, sort of close for the last section in thinking about like, how do you disseminate um, uh, the plan and how do you organize it uh, now that you've got your 10? Um, so one piece is just in your folders. Just a quick thing here is the idea of like making sure that you are really visible, that you've got your most recent version up in front of you. So this was a screen grab of, of a year or two ago where I said like, the one that I, I send externally is up there. And all the old versions are in the archive for old versions. And then I've got my first deck where I first sort of said, this is what I'm going to do as first principles. And then I've got the, the dirty laundry version, the one that I said at the start, the internal version, the plan for me. And that's the one that's sort of, that's sort of just for me. And the, uh, they'll always be different. They're at different speeds and at, at different times you're updating them all. But the idea is, is like your most recent version is easily visible and all your old stuff you can find if you, if you get anxious, but it's in another folder. So be sort of super clear, like this is, this is where my current version of my plan is. The other piece, if you notice from that folder, is like there's deck versions for others and word versions for others. I might have to write memos to people. I might need to write a particular deck for a particular uh, situation, be it a, a strategic partner um, or an investor or whatever. So think of it as almost like a hub and spoke journey that you save as your internal deck and then you put it out and, and, and sort of, and then take it out to that deck, to, you know, sort of to that cause. You might have a great conversation with an investor and come up with three, five, three, four ideas to tailor that will then change the core one, change the one in the hub. And then your next spoke as you go off to investor three or investor four is gonna be improved by virtue of you've always gone back to the middle and improved the hub version of your plan. And so whether it's for investors, community stakeholders, others, you can see that, that there's gonna be different versions of this depending on, um, on what's happening, but they all come from the same sort of, sort of genesis, if you will, the, 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 the hub deck, the internal deck. And then on, a note on dissemi dissemination, <clears throat> trying to keep control of your material. Uh, one suggestion I've got, I don't own any stock, I'm just a user. In fact, the uh, template uh, that I'm going to give you is via uh, DocSend, it's just the one I use. It's good for Yale and it's good for, for this sort of stuff. The idea here is um, I don't send out PDFs, I send out the same link every time for, say, the template. Um, and then the people that, that, lo that look at your plan, um, they click on the link that you've provided and it, it goes to the latest version that you've just uploaded. 
So if you've sent out your, your best thinking to the world and then your best thinking changes, don't worry about where you've sent it. They're, they're not forwarding a PDF. They're not forwarding a PowerPoint to their friends. They're just forwarding the link and the link goes to your latest version that you're in control of. And you can switch off that link at any time as well. The other thing that's really handy about it, say you're, 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 you're putting out a, an intro uh, to customers or something like that, is you can tell when people open it. So this one, I, I, I sort of sent it out to Brian Jacob. Uh, Brian Jacob had a look at it. He 100% viewed it. So that means he looked through every single slide. He took two, two minutes, 12 to, to look at it. And I think that's about right. He went through it. He actually read it. He didn't just flick through it. Um, and I could even click on the stats and see which pages did he spend more time on. So you get really, you're in control of your intellectual property. And also your intellectual property is going out there uh, in a way that you know what's happening. So if you then have a conversation with that customer or that investor on the phone, um, and you know that they've read your plan or not. So you can either go, would you mind, do you want me to go back to basics and tell you from the start? Or do you want me to, you know, or do you have any questions? You know how to steer the conversation because you know if they've read it already. Um, another piece uh, that, that I think is important uh, on, on dissemination is the idea of um, cloning, uh, <clears throat> cloning your intro. You're gonna have to write and disseminate this a lot. Um, so uh, this is the idea of like, I don't know if you use Evernote or Notion or, or, like, or, or many of the other places where you can keep all your notes. So I use Evernote. Ideas like this is a, a paragraph that I will write a lot. So copy and paste it from here. And as you can see here, I even link for more, here's a three minute PowerPoint intro to, to my consultancy, um, knowing that it takes about three minutes to read my PowerPoint intro because of the stats prior. So that paragraph, I can now drop in to the 25 emails I'm going to have to send in this month in order to get out to who I want to get out to. So copy and paste, you know, get, get used to phrasing things and then save it somewhere and then save a lot of time by, by, by sort of uh, then sort of uh, putting that out there. The other place is also interesting, I think on Apple and I think PC's got a similar version here, is the keyword strokes. So if you do sort of a, like say semicolon sub plan, then it will, it will actually fill in and put in the website to your plan, which is your, say your docs and link going to your recent document. So you're in control of your IP, but you're also getting your, getting your plan out there fast um, to, or as fast as you want to. It's not slowing you down. So that's us. We've done a whirlwind tour in right on an hour in terms of um, why making a plan first and why are you even starting this first? I think I wanted to really ground you to be purpose-driven and connected first because your plan will be all the better if you have that grounding in your own personal purpose and then you've nailed or getting to nail that the, the sort of the current version of the vision and mission of the organize of the, of, the, of the venture and then work to a living plan uh, don't try and create a plan that is a document that you say phew i've done it and it's off the side and you never see, you never see it again it's a living document you've always got the latest version and your older versions are in another folder and you're getting out there and sharing it with people and gathering fellow travelers as you get there so with that in mind, I can stick around for a couple of questions, but thank you so much for your time and, and engagement and attention. All the best for your venture. You can follow SciCity. Um, City.yale.edu is a great spot to, to be at. Um, I'm on Boydie and, and my e uh, email address is there. Um, you will have noticed that um, um, at the bottom of quite a lot of the pages, there's the template. Um, it's downloadable uh, uh, as well um, by doing a, a, a sort of a little keystroke. Uh, that I mentioned earlier, short keystroke, there's the template uh, where you can download it and, and sort of save as and, and create your own piece from my sort of very simple scaffolding. Um, and to the extent you want, you have time for a survey, feel free to do so, um, or sort of let, let Sci City uh, know what you think. So thanks very much, everybody. And we'll hopefully see you around either on campus on, on Sci City or on Zoom. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Peter. This is so informative.